Hello, welcome everyone to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and Ted Wayman. The goal of these videos is to help improve your financial knowledge and acumen by learning how to analyze financial statements. And we help you by analyzing the financial statements of famous companies. So today we're going to be analyzing Polestar. So Polestar is a relatively well-known uh, automotive business that produces electric cars and vehicles. Uh, interestingly, they actually uh, were created in 1996 um, as uh, through a partnership, one of Volvo's partners, so called Flash Polestar. Uh, Volvo then acquired the whole company in 2015, and of course, um, you know Volvo, as as a lot of you will probably know, you know became uh, was acquired by Geely, which is a Chinese uh, company, back in 2010, I believe. So the goal that Polestar have, and what's interesting here actually is the goal that Polestar have put in. They've said that they wish to be able to produce or sell, sorry, uh, 290,000 cars per year by 2025. Now, just to put that into context, there are some analysts that forecast that Tesla will sell 20 million cars by 2025. Now, I'm personally skeptical of that number, but just to give you a bit more, uh, so another figure that should give you some context, in 2021, uh, Tesla sold uh, just under 302,000 cars. So they're not necessarily, Pulsar not necessarily forecasting to outperform Tesla in sales, but they are seeking to take a significant market share, which is very interesting. Now, um, before we go into the analysis of the company, stick around because we're going to be looking at the share price. Although we're not providing financial advice here, it is important to look at that share price as context for the backward looking financial statements that we analyze. Now, the company actually floated. Now, I could be wrong here, and I'm, I'm open to people uh, jumping in with some comments. Obviously, be polite doing so. We're all here to learn from each other. Um, it, what, they, what they did was they actually um, floated via a SPAC. So a SPAC basically floated in 2021. Um, they uh, obviously acquired uh, shares in Polestar. So obviously since then, the share price has fluctuated, which is why although Polestar announced that it went public in 2022, I think it's 24th of June of 2022, when you look at the share price in Google or Yahoo or any other online, online search, um, you will see that the uh, share price actually started in March of 2021. So that's that's what I believe is going on here. Now, if you had invested in the SPAC in 2021, you'd be sitting on a loss of 43%. And if you'd invested a year ago, you'd be sitting on a loss of just over 46%. So not something that's been profitable so far, but who knows in the future as they sell more vehicles that may change. So we're going to look at that later on. Um, so uh, I'll take it over to Ted now, who will share and kind of walk through the financial statements so that you'll be able to analyze their future financial statements and any other company much more quickly and accurately to get a good sense of the business as well. So whether you sell to these companies or they're a client of yours, uh, or whether you're thinking about investing in them, or even if you're up for an interview and you want to sound really smart during the interview process, these videos are going to be incredibly valuable for you. So, Ted, take it away. Let's let's go through the financial statements with our viewers. Thank you very much, uh, Mary, and good to see you. And welcome to uh, well, welcome back to all of our subscribers. Welcome if this is the first uh, video um, that you've seen on our channel. Please do uh, do remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please do subscribe to um, uh, these videos the, to this channel. Um, and one of the reasons for subscribing is that um, you can then request um, uh, videos and most of our videos are as a result of requests. So here is Dr. 23 Ripper, um, uh, who uh, comments on another video, said, nice video as always, um, thank you very much. Um, and would you do one on Polestar or Arrival? Well, we've actually done Arrival. Um, it's, you just need to search for it um, uh, and it'll pop up, search our channel. Um, uh, and here is Polestar. So quite interesting, uh, Moe, uh, you know, your comments about, um, uh, you know, the number of cars these guys are selling. We did do, um, Tesla a while ago. Um, Tesla, I think the market valuation um, I read somewhere was based on the on the fact that Tesla is going to sell two in every three electric vehicles in the future. 
Uh, well, clearly, um, Polestar have uh, other designs over that, so they don't want them to be um, uh, uh, selling quite so much. And also, um, uh, it's quite interesting. I was doing obviously a little bit of research on the company before making this video. And then I was on Facebook and I had quite a lot of adverts saying that I want to test drive a Polestar. So um, good old social media snooping uh, on all of my habits and, and just keeping me, uh, uh, you know, just making Zuckerberg, just keeping an eye on, on what I'm up to, which is which is nice to know uh, that my privacy um, is well protected. Anyway, we digress now find it very interesting and we'll talk about the SPAC in a minute um uh, the SPAC by the way a special purpose acquisition um company we'll talk about the SPAC in, in a minute when we talk about the um uh, the the share price um but I, always interested in the financials um and for a company like this it floats it's very difficult to find the financials if you go on their website there isn't an annual report there's nothing that says this is the performance of the business which I have to admit I find really odd because for me that's a bit like buying a car without popping up the uh, the the, the the bonnet and having a look underneath now if you don't understand how engines work you can pay somebody else you can pay a mechanic to come and do it for you but either way you kind of need to look at the numbers um so the best i could do was this form f20 which is a kind of a form that um companies have to produce um uh, and it's filed with the um the securities and exchange commission the sdc in the us which they have to um produce uh, when they are listing for example so it's a it's a it's a, it's a statutory form um and in this uh, you will find um the uh, the actual uh, you know it's polestar automotive holding uk plc um uh, but it's uh, listed on the uh, i think it's on the nasdaq now with them um, uh, uh, the, through the spac um and uh, you know, you've actually got to go and have a look in this in uh, in, in this document to find the financial numbers. Uh, and this uh, document is 442 pages long. And if you can be bothered to read through 238 pages, you will then end up on page 239 where you will finally get to the numbers. OK, so you know, it, it's not easy to find. Um, and you kind of think, well, why isn't it easy to find? And, and maybe um, because of this number here, you can see it jumps out at us. These guys are making a million and this is in thousands of dollars. So it's a thousand million, which is a billion. They're posting a billion uh, we're in dollars, aren't we? Billion dollar loss. OK, so sales are one point three or yeah about 1.3 billion the cost of sales is also 1.3 billion so they make basically nothing on actually making and selling these vehicles they're making them at cost pretty much at break even 860 million dollars they make on it and then they've got um uh, the sgna that's the cost of running the business they've is that 860,000 ted uh eight, sorry yeah my mistake it's less than a million dollars 860,000 you're absolutely right well done Mary, picking me up on that so um yeah if you if you if you sell uh vehicles for 1.4 uh, 1.3 billion it costs you 1.3 to make um, you're going to make no money at all. They're making less than a million pounds uh, in gross profit um, for the year. Now, they have been making, you know, 56, 52 million um, in previous years. So this is a kind of, you know, this is a fall. And we don't know why that is. Have they been discounting the cars? Have the cost of making no cars going up through raw materials? Maybe the chips, they can't get hold of the chips, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. SG and A, um, the, uh, uh, you know, the cost of running the business, those have gone up significantly. Um, and the R&D, so they are kind of investing in kind of new batteries and new technology and drivers, this, that and the other and all the rest of it. Um, anyway, so, you know, the long and the short of it is that they are making this loss of a billion dollars. Um, there it is. They got a little bit of financing costs, forty five million dollars, uh, which is the cost of the debt that they're using. Um, yeah, yeah, they're just making a very, very big loss. Now, I'm not saying that you can't make a loss and then turn to profitability. Tesla made a loss uh, several times, but Tesla very, very, very nearly went bust on several occasions. Um, and these guys are looking like they are, you know, they're not in a happy place at the moment. It'd be quite interesting to see what their 2022 figures look like um, when they are produced. Obviously, right now we're filming this. It's dated uh, the end of September 2022. So we're going to have to wait for a good few, you know, five to six months uh, before we actually get a view of uh, their performance in this particular year. Um, looking at the balance sheet, um, so we've got the uh, uh, up here. We've got the um, uh, the uh, the non-current assets. Interesting enough, uh, the non-current assets. A lot of that is uh, the intangible assets and goodwill. 
So goodwill, this will be the price that the SPAC has paid uh, uh, for this organization. So we kind of expect there's quite a lot of goodwill in there um, and you know other intangibles, things you can't touch. Whereas in here, and we're just, we ought to sort of have a look at that. If we look at note 12, it'll give us a little bit more information about what's in that number. In fact, no, it won't be the, the goodwill on the SPAC because it's, um, uh, it was there in the previous year. So it's, it, there's a lot of intangible, um, and these are, will either be software and intellectual property rights, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or goodwill. I mean, basically stuff which is really difficult to sell. Property, plant and equipment, there it is. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna go have a look at note 12. Let's have a quick look at note 12 while we're here. So here is note 12 um, uh, and there's your kind of, your carrying amount of, you know, the million, uh, over a million dollars of intangible assets. Um, and it is mainly acquired intellectual property rights. So those are the, those are the big numbers driving that. Um, uh, and, and so, you know, we can see down here, it internally developed IP were primarily related to the Polestar precept. So in effect, intellectual property rights, what are they doing? They're kind of inventing stuff. Uh, and then they're kind of, you know, they're patenting it and, and saying, you know, we're going to benefit from this in the future and therefore we'll take it forward. Um, you know, could you sell that? Is it worth a billion dollars? You know, that's what they spent on it. What it's worth? I have no idea. So um, that's a kind of, you know, that's a, that's the, at the higher risk end of their assets, let's put it like that. So if we return back to the actual uh, financial statements, um, uh, here they are. And um, we're looking uh, again at the balance sheet. Um, we can see that, you know, most of their assets are this kind of this intangible um, assets, not stuff you can you can touch. They've got they've got quite a lot of cash in there. You can see the cash has gone up. OK, so that will be a part of their kind of um uh, you know, they're raising cash, they're not making a profit. So they um, certainly are, are not, um, uh, uh, you know, they're not increasing their cash um, through uh, uh, through their trading. So you can see here, um, they have actually um, been raising additional share capital by issuing more shares and using that in order to kind of, you know, shore up the business. Um, so total current assets, they got the inventories, there's the cars, um, uh, and uh, the people who owe them money for buying those cars, the trade receivables. Um, very little, no real kind of trade receivables up at the top here. Um, so you'll notice that, you know, really they're kind of, you know, in, in terms of financing those sales, they're going to be using an external finance company. So 3.3 billion in assets. Um, look at the liabilities. Um, the current liabilities are actually quite high so this is again another a little bit of an alarm for us um, so the current assets just to highlight so if you've got current assets of 1.6 billion and your current liabilities are 3 billion uh, then you have a potential issue you have a liquidity issue um, uh, so just so we understand that ratio the liquidity ratio for these guys is 0.53 that says for every dollar they owe and have to pay soon they've got 53 cents either as cash or coming in as cash soon on an acid test they've got 35, uh, 0.35. So if you ignore inventory, forget about the cars and just look at the kind of you know, the underlying business in terms of cash and trade um, receivables uh, for every dollar they owe uh, and have to pay soon, they've got 35 cents of cash and coming in as cash soon. OK, so this is a, a, a this is a big issue for them. This is a, a big liquidity issue uh, for these guys. Uh, and just so we understand, um, you know, the working capital requirement, um, you know, in terms of how long it takes them to collect the money in, um, it's looking at about 134 days. So it suggests that there is some financing of sales going on there. Um, sorry, it takes them 134 days. Sorry, my mistake. It takes them 134 days to sell their inventory, which is a long time. Um, I'm pretty sure even in the car industry, uh, 134 days from buying the components uh, through production to actually um, shipping and sale is 134 days. It sounds a very long time to me. It takes another 66 days approximately to collect the money in, and it takes them 338 days to pay the people of their suppliers. OK, now that's an approximation. The numbers won't be exactly right, but it kind of gives you a feel that these guys, they're just struggling to pay their suppliers. And you can see, you know, there's a big old number there and a big increase from the previous year um, because they just haven't got the cash to be able to do that. You know, they do have you know, they do have cash, um, uh, but they don't have enough cash. You know, their cash, just so we remind ourselves, they've got about, um, you know, here we go. They've got 756, um, uh, 756. Are million dollars and they owe 1.4 billion so these guys are pretty cash strapped so 
not looking too healthy at the moment. Let's go and have a look at their um, uh, uh, the cash flow. So we don't even, I don't think we need to look at the movement in equity. These guys are clearly not paying any dividends. Um, but the cash flow, um, now again, more alarm bells coming across. Um, so here we see these guys are burning cash. Okay, so they are not generating cash. They are burning cash. Um, they've got then that, you know, they're making these big losses and they are they are burning through um, uh, the actual cash as well. So that's not good. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you think about your cash flow, um, if you've got, you know, about three quarters of a, of a, 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 a you know, sorry, $750 million in the bank, and you're burning at about 300 million a year, uh, you're going to be around for about two and a half years before you need to go back cap in hand to your investors uh, in order to get some more money. So, um, you know, I'm not saying the investors won't put more money in. Um, but, you know, personally, I'd rather a company that is actually generating cash, uh, rather than burning cash, because um, at some point, if they carry on burning cash, the investors will just go, you know what, not interested. Um, uh, we don't think that you're a viable business. We're not going to back you anymore. And then they are no longer a going concern. So these guys have some major issues. Um, investment. Investment is pretty small. Um, you'll notice here, so their investment is pretty small. And actually, the investment is considerably smaller than their, their depreciation. So if you're, if you're depreciating your existing um, uh, uh, existing assets at about $239 million and you're only investing $130 million, you're not really growing the business. Um, I'd expect um, that investment to be greater than the depreciation amortization. But they can't afford it because they haven't got the money. So what is going on down the bottom? Um, uh, here we see the proceeds from uh, borrowings and the repayment of borrowings. So in effect, this is about refinancing. These, these two lines, it's all about refinancing. And you'll notice that they are raising more money than they're repaying by about 300 million. So they are increasing the debt and that is part of what is financing this business. And they are also uh, issuing shares and they are having to do that every single year. And I expect them to carry on doing that every single year, or you know, certainly uh, for a uh, you know a while more, um, because uh, they just haven't got the cash. So you know, they've raised a billion in cash because they are burning that cash. So the cash has gone up. Okay, their balance balance at the bank has gone from 316 million to 756 million, which is good. But they've done that because they've done uh, this financing. They've been borrowing money and they've been raising money through shares. Well, at some point, the banks will just say, no, you can't. We're not going to lend you anymore, especially if you're making losses like that and burning cash. So then you're dependent on the shareholders. <coughs> and if the shareholders actually lose faith and say, I'm not interested, then it is game over. And that is effectively uh, the kind of, you know, the, 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 the key numbers. OK, and um, we'll look at the movement in equity. Here is the movement in equity. So we can see the accumulated deficit. OK, so this is the retained earnings or the retained losses, so to speak. Um, you know, they just basically the, the retained losses are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and we can see the share capital. So they are um, you know, raising additional money um, uh, through, um, uh, you know, issuing shares. Um, you know, and, and, and I don't think that that is really sustainable uh, going forward. Um, for, for, for too long. So what does all this mean for the share price? Well, I have to admit, so Moe and I, you know, we were kind of you know, scratching our head and trying to work this one out because, um, of course, these guys floated, I think, in June, um, uh, in, in, in June the 24th in 2022. Um, yet we have a share price here that dates back to 2021 and we couldn't quite work this one out. And then I kind of, my guess is, and, and if you if you know something different, then please do um, you know, leave a comment in the in the comments box. Um, obviously be polite. Um, you know, we're all polite to each other in this channel. We don't get everything right and i do make mistakes um I just another video i was calling ao world aol by mistake so i apologize about that um but i reckon this is where the spac happened okay so the spac special purpose acquisition company it's kind of a shell company so it's kind of set up uh, and it's floated on you know the nasdaq for example um and, and what happens is that a bunch of you know people put them put money into it and then they go out to the market and they say we floated this back and we're going to look for an acquisition we're going to look for a really good acquisition and this and, and then what happens is that investors get really interested and they think oh wow i want to be part of this because they're going to buy the next big thing uh, and therefore they buy they buy 
you know, shares in a company which is basically just, you know, a, a company with a ton of cash. So you set up this company with a ton of cash. You then go out and market it. Um, and the people who are marketing it, the clever investment bankers, well, they quietly sell their shares uh, to people who are buying um, those shares. So you've now got end up with a kind of a lot of, you know, uh, widows and orphans. Sorry, let me just go back to that. Um, uh, uh, you've got you've got widows and orphans coming up there um, who are buying at this point here. Uh, and then it's kind of these shares are then trading. And then somebody says, oh, wow, this is really going to be big. And it kind of peaks out here. So all the really clever investment bankers now sell out. So now you've just got retailers who are in it. And it's kind of starting to bounce around. And nobody's quite sure what's going on. And then it announces that it's going to, I don't know where, we we'll, we'll probably probably announce about here that it's going to buy something like Polestar. And obviously Polestar, you can't see the numbers because it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then finally, we start to realize that this company is actually making a loss and oh wow look at that and it's just and it's just going down and down and down so if you are buying a SPAC caveat emptor which is latin for let the buyer beware okay you're on your own on this one if you buy if, a, if you have a company with a million pounds in the bank and that's all the company has and somebody says to you it's going to buy the next best thing uh, you can buy it and it's valued at a billion pounds, I suggest you're being taken for a ride. Uh, and I think a lot of people have been taken for a ride and that the SPAC is a kind of, you know, it's sort of Wall Street's latest kind of, you know, slightly, not even slightly immoral approach to kind of, you know, to, you know, effectively sucking money out of ordinary investors. That's my little bit of a rant. So I apologize about that. And I'm sure there's people who've made money on SPACs and I'm, I'm very happy for you. Um, Anyway, so the point here is that this is languishing right down the bottom. Why is it languishing right down the bottom? Because you've got a company here that's making a loss. It's illiquid. Um, it is only surviving because it is raising debt and raising equity. If it can't raise any more debt, and I don't think it's going to be able to, if I wasn't a bank, I wouldn't touch these guys with a barge pole, especially with interest rates going in the directions. Banks are now, they've got to consolidate. They've got to hold on to that cash because there's going to be a wave of defaults coming. So only the equity backers are going to be there. So if you're a share, holder you're going to get a tap on the shoulders that says you we're going to need some more money and if you don't put any more money in these guys are going to go bust so if you are buying into these guys and you buy into the story and you think wow this is it it's all going to go up from here we're going to be the next tesla buy 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 and if you don't then you might be looking at this and think well you know it can still go down in value um at whatever price it is it can still go down in value and i reckon that this will be uh, you know a favorite of the shorts market people betting it's going to go down in value and maybe uh, if you're watching this on reddit or one of those kind of uh, those uh, um, you know as a meme stock you might be thinking well let's do a short squeeze and we can make some money etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know outside of that kind of that short term trading if you are a serious investor uh, i would be you know you know very very wary about investing in this company i'm not saying it's all good it's going to turn around and it's all everything's going to be rosy and you know in a couple of years time uh, somebody will be watching this and saying wow ted got it so wrong you know this is the this is the amazon of the of the electric vehicle market but um you know right now this company is teetering right on the edge. So um, there you go, Moe. That's my my sort of tuppence worth for you know for what it's worth. Um, certainly, uh, I, I'm not investing in this company. I mean, they may have great cars, but um, uh, you know, from a financial perspective, um, you know, if I popped the bonnet of this, uh, the metaphorical bonnet uh, of this financial company, uh, and looked underneath, I really don't like what I'm seeing. Great, yeah, and that's. You know, just to remind all our viewers, you know, the purpose of the this show is uh, not to uh, help you with investing, but is to educate, right? And uh, the idea is that you can understand any future financial statements, especially quarterly financial statements from a company like this, based upon the analysis that we've provided here, so that you, we can help you do that much more quickly and more accurately and any other company as well. So just like this company was a request, if you're watching this video and you have a company that you're really interested in, whether you're selling to them or investing in them or think about working for them, whatever it might be, uh, and you'd like us to help you analyze the finances of that company, do leave a note in the comment section, give us some context as to why so that we can bump you up in the list if it's interesting enough. So until then, thank you everyone. Thank you, Ted. We'll see you on the next video. Good to see you, Moe. Catch you later.